In this video, we're going to demonstrate how we can use mouse listeners to handle mouse events in our application and draw some circles on the screen. So I'm going to use Eclipse for this project. In the past, we've used uh, Nano to write our Java files. We can also use Text Wrangler, but just to show off some of the features, I'm going to use Eclipse for this. So I'm going to go ahead and open Eclipse. Uh, it's probably available in your home directory if you, haven't, if you haven't added it to your toolbar. I've added it to my dock here, so I can very quickly open it just by clicking. We'll give it a second to open up. And here we have our interface, and you can see we've got our package explorer on the left, I've got a console down on the bottom, and I've got an area where I can write my code in, this, in the center here. And you can modify this, you can really kind of customize your screen. These tabs, you can pick up and move them, you can close them, uh, you can go into window to show different views if you need to see different views, but I'm going to try to keep a nice clean interface here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click in my package explorer and I'm going to select new Java project and I'm going to call this circle window and I'm, default location is fine I can use the Java 1.8 JRE that's fine and I'm going to separate my folders for source and class files and I can click next but I'm pretty much going to take all of the defaults here so this is fine I'm going to hit finish and now I have circle window now I'm going to create a few a uh, few different files here so that I can I can work with this I'm going to first right click on source and I'm going to click new class and I'm going to build a main application here so we'll go ahead and just call this uh, circle application and Java Lang object is fine for now it was a super class we'll leave everything else the same I'm going to hit finish and now I have circle application so I'm going to just add a main method here public static void main And if I wanted to run this now, I could save it. I could run. Nothing happens, you know, nothing too interesting. But I've got a complete application at this point. Now I'm going to use a JFrame here. So I'm going to just go ahead and declare a JFrame. Now you'll notice that I get a couple, of, I get these little red lines that are identifying that there's an error here. And if I come over and I hover over this, you'll see uh, it doesn't know what JFrame is. We don't have a complete statement. So I can actually either right click there and I can go to source, add import. Or I could just hit control space after I type that, and that will also add the import. So let's go ahead and create this new J frame. And this is, you know, you can see here I've got yellow here, just telling me that I've declared this. So it kind of points out both the errors and the issues I might have in my code. I'm going to go ahead and say, we'll say window.setSize, and we'll make it 500 by 500. We're going to set window default close operation. And we get this nice code completion whenever we hit a period, whenever we hit dot. So I'm going to say dispose on close. And I'm going to say window.setVisible true. Now if I run my application, I get this window and it's off to the left, but that's fine and I'll close it. And that's all it does. It doesn't do anything beyond that. Uh, so we want to make this do a few different things. And the, the first thing we're going to want to make this do is we're going to want to have it respond to clicks. We're going to want to have it draw things. The first thing I'll do is I'll create a mouse listener. So I'm going to right click and select new class. And I'm going to call this circle click listener. And it can, it's super class can be object, but I can also add and we'll type in mouse listener and I'll select that and I can say I can add in things so we're going to in, uh, implement the inherited, ab inherited abstract methods here and when I click finish you'll see it's going to automatically generate all of these things so I don't have to spend the time typing all of this out uh, you'll notice I get mouse clicked here for free it's already going to have the text there I'm going to get mouse pressed I'm going to get mouse released and uh, I'm going to get mouse entered as well as mouse exited. So each one of these is called for particular purposes within the mouse uh, listener interface. Uh, mouse clicked is called when I click, actually push the mouse down and let it back up. Mouse pressed is called when I click, push the mouse down. Mouse released is called when I let the mouse back up. Mouse entered and mouse exited are called when the mouse enters or exits this component. Now another thing that you'll see here is this at override. And that's just telling Java, you know, when I implement this method, it should be overriding a method that's already out there. So in this case, it's the method from mouse listener. If uh, this is not in there, let's say I put in a typo, 
you'll see, well, first of all, I get an error because I haven't implemented the, uh, the interface. But let's say we create this, or we create a new one that is almost the same name, but I say mouse X clicked. You'll notice I get this error, and that's because this override signifies that this has to override or implement a method that is already declared. So we don't actually need all of this, and this is kind of messy, right? Because we have all of these different things, but all we want to deal with are mouse clicks. So fortunately, Java allows us to extend a class instead of implement an interface. So if I go ahead and I just delete this, we can start over from scratch. Delete that, and that's fine. We'll say this is fine. We're going to create another class, and you can, you can take either approach. You can take this approach or the listener, but here I'm going to call this circle click listener. And instead of implementing an interface, I'm going to extend mouse adapter. And I can type that in and then hit control space and it will find that right class. And I hit finish. And this is just much cleaner code. I don't need all of those different methods. Now, if I want to implement mouse click or uh, mouse clicked, all I have to do is hit control space and the blank space here and it's going to suggest some methods that I can implement based on the fact that I'm extending mouse adapter. I'm just going to click mouse clicked. And there we go. We get all of that for free. So we want this mouse adapter to respond to clicks, and uh, we can actually do that pretty easily. Let's just give it, you know, we'll say system.out.println, and we'll just have it print out coordinates that the click, the click occurred in. So e.getx, e.gety, and we'll just instead of we'll just do a create a string here out of this. So we'll, whenever we add this circle click listener to another object, whenever the mouse is clicked, we'll get this X and Y. So if we want to just put this into the window.getContentPane, add mouse listener, we can just throw a new one in there, new circle click listener. And then we run our application. Whenever we click on the screen, we're getting a new coordinate. Now, you'll notice a few things about the coordinates. Wherever my mouse is, it's going to give an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. And if you see, when I click in the top right, I get a high X and a low Y. If I click in the top left, I get a low X and a low Y. If I click in the bottom left, I get a low X and a high Y. And if I click down here, I'm going to get high values for both of those. And that's because the origin is actually in zero. The origin zero zero is up in this top left corner. As I move to the right, my X increases. As I move down, my Y increases. And the reason for this is because you, a lot of things are kind of hard to follow. If you're, if you're looking at a, a traditional coordinate geometry, uh, you might have you know, your X, maybe you want the origin in the center and you want X going to the right and negative X to the left, but then as your window changes size, that changes the whole geometry or the whole coordinates of everything. So zero, zero is always right here and it's just a fixed point and we don't have to think about where that's going to be. So it makes it easier to identify in coordinate space where our objects should be drawn. So we're going to want to draw circles. Once we have this out here, we want to capture those coordinates and we want to draw a circle in that position. So in order to do that, we're going to create two new classes. We're going to create a special type of JPanel that knows how to draw circles. We're going to create a circle that, that knows some information about itself. Let's go ahead and start off by creating that, uh, that circle class. So I'm going to use some shortcuts here. I'm going to go ahead and click New Class. I'm going to call it a circle and I'm gonna hit finish and it's gonna give me a very basic class but I'm gonna give it some values that I want to have inside of the circle so we'll say private int x private int y private int diameter and private color and color isn't available in the Java Lang package so we have to import it so I'm gonna hit control space and I'm gonna pick out java.awt.color and we're gonna say private color color now, instead of writing all of the code that's going to be involved in creating a constructor, you know, if we wanted to save time, we could just make all of these values public, but that's not very good object orientation because we haven't encapsulated anything, we haven't protected our data. So we're going to go ahead and right click and we will choose source and we will generate a constructor using fields. We're just going to select all of these and we're going to say after the last one, we're going to create a constructor and that writes all of that code for us. So if you're using Nano or Text Wrangler, you could write all of that out, but this makes it very easy. And we also want to provide access to those, so we can actually right-click, or we can go into Source at the top, 
and we can say generate getters and setters and we want this to be a we want this to be an immutable object so we're going to select the getters and once this object is created now there's no way for any other uh, any any uh, user to modify the values in here we're only providing the construct we're only specifying them on construction and we are only providing ac or read access to each one of these values through these get methods so this encapsulates the circle pretty well. We know that the circle is going to have an X and Y coordinate. We know it's going to have a diameter, and we, can, we know it's going to have a color. And those are all going to be set when the, when the circle is created. So the only thing left to do is to draw the circle. And to draw the circle, we're going to create a method called public void draw. And we're going to have to pass in a graphics object. And the graphics object is going to give us the ability to draw on some screen. Now, we don't know what that is yet because we haven't defined what that screen is going to be. But we can still, you know, kind of, since this is abstracted away, we can still use this graphics object to draw on whatever screen it happens to be. So we're going to use first g.setColor. And we're going to set the color equal to whatever the color of this circle is. And then we're going to use g.fillOval. Now we don't draw circles, we draw ovals. And if we draw a circle or an oval with the width and height that are the same, then that'll be okay. So we're going to fill the oval and we're going to use x, y, and then we're going to pass in diameter and diameter. That way we just get a, a circle or a oval that has a width of diameter and a height of diameter and everything will work out. So this, this provides a pretty nice simple circle that we can use. Now we're going to want to draw these circles so I'm going to create a new class and that new class is going to be a circle panel and we're going to have that extend J panel because it's going to work just like a J panel and I'll hit control space there to, to fill in the rest of this. It's going to work just like a J panel, except this J panel is going to draw circles. And the way it's going to do that, we're going to create a private list, and I'll hit control space. Make sure you use Java util list because we want this to be a list of circles. And we're going to make it a list of circles. We'll create this using, you know what, we'll use a linked list here because we're never going to want to access one particular circle. We're only going to want to access these circles one by one. So I'm going to type link list and we're going to import that and we'll go ahead and call this a link list of circles. Now in order to add circles to this list of circles, we're going to create a method public void add circle. And all we're going to do here is add that circle to our circle. So we have this circles list. We're going to put this circle in the circles list. And now this J panel is collecting circles, but it actually has to draw them as well. So we're going to override a method here. I'm going to hit control space and I'm going to select the paint method. Now note this override is automatically filled in by Eclipse. You don't have to add it. If you don't add the override, it won't make a difference as long as you do everything correctly. Override just helps you to catch errors that you might have if you have a typo in your method name. I'm going to select all of this text and remove it. And all we're going to do in our paint method now is we are going to paint each circle. We're going to use that, do that using a for each loop. So for circle in circles, circle, oh, we need to declare a variable name. So we'll say circle C in circles, C dot draw. And we're just going to pass in this graphics, uh, this graphics object. So this paint method gets automatically called whenever we need to paint a J panel, and it's just going to inherit this method and inherit that same call to the gra or same call using that same graphics object, and we're going to use that to draw all of our circles. Now that we've done that, we need to connect some things together. So we have a circle that's going to represent all of our data. We have a circle application that's going to be used to show our window. We have a circle click listener that we need to fill in and create circles. And we have a circle panel that is just going to hold the circles and draw them. So our circle click listener needs to be modified so that it can actually take that J panel and add new circles to it when necessary. So I'm going to create private J pan or private circle panel we'll just call it panel and at this point you could write out your constructor or you can use con uh, your source generate constructor using fields and we can just add that right in and here we go now we ha we're going to just call use this dot panel is equal to panel this super uh, call is actually uh, inserted automatically and all that does is tell the super constructor to execute so 
we can omit that if we want to, but this is just saying call the super, uh, this class is super, uh, the super class is constructor, which would be the mouse adapter, which doesn't actually do anything. All right, now that we have a panel, when we get a new mouse click, we don't want to actually just print out the mouse click, we want to add a new circle. So we'll use panel, add circle, and then we'll come up with some, uh, some values here. We're going to create a new circle, and we're going to use e.getx, which is going to tell us where the mouse was clicked on the x, uh, x axis. We're going to use e.gety, which will tell us where the mouse was clicked on the y axis. And then we're going to pass in a diameter. We can use something arbitrary here. Let's say 24, for example, and we'll give it a color. Let's do color.blue. And we'll need to import that. So I didn't import that when I typed it out. So all I have to do is right click on color, go down to source, and click add import. Now my circle click listener will automatically add in new circles as it's clicked. It will add those to the circle panel. Now in our circle application, we need to change some things so that we can create a circle panel. We can use a circle click listener for that circle, circle panel, and we can add that as the content pane for our uh, window. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new circle panel. Circle panel, panel is equal to new circle panel. And I'm going to add that to my window. Window set content pane panel. And I'm also going to add a, a action listener, or I'm sorry, a mouse listener to this circle panel. So panel add mouse listener and I'm going to create a new circle click listener. In order to do that, I have to pass in the same panel, which maybe looks a little awkward, but the circle click listener is just saying, what, where do I need to add these circles? Which panel does, do these circles get added to? And the panel is adding the mouse listener to say, you know, who's listening for clicks on this, this panel? So you'll notice now when I run this, I'm going to click a lot, but I'm not actually going to get any circles. And the reason for that is because I haven't told my screen to repaint. And if I adjust my screen, you'll notice it automatically repaints. So I need to tell the J pan or my circle panel every time I add a new circle, I want to repaint my window. So we can go into circle panel, and after circle we add a circle, we can use this repaint. Now when I run, you'll notice I get circles but there's a weirdness. The circles kind of show up a little bit off of where they should be, and that's because the X and Y that I'm adding to my circle is the top left corner of where, if there was a square around that circle, it identifies where that square would be. So we need to modify this just a little bit. We want to go into our circle click listener, and we're going to subtract 12, and subtract 12 from our X and Y. Now when we run, you'll notice that those clicks cause a circle to appear right underneath my mouse, right in the center. So that's all for now. This should give you a good idea of how to use Eclipse, how to use some of the, the features in Eclipse to make your coding a little bit simpler. It should give you an idea of how to create a, and react to mouse events, uh, and it should give you a little bit more information about drawing in Java. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to practice your coding.